Robert Bales, sergeant, accused of killing 19 Afghan civilians. You all know the story. It's all over the place. A special guest coming on right now. We're going to discuss this story and the related whole issue of what's going on in the military. But before I bring this man on, I just have to tell you that I don't have too many heroes, but he's one of them. I met him, I'm going to say, 25 years ago now. Dr. Peter Bregan, MD psychiatrist, who wrote one of the great books of the 20th century involving science called Toxic Psychiatry that turned my thinking around completely as a medical investigative reporter on what was going on in the entire psychiatric profession with the toxicity of drugs and false diagnoses and so on. And he has stood up against his entire profession practically over the years, not only stood up but thrived and stood up against the pharmaceutical companies who have been trying to push psychiatric drugs down people's throats all over the place. And he's worked as expert witness in court on key, key decisions involving psychiatric drugs and violence and so on. Dr. Peter Bregan, B-R-E-G-G-I-N. I'm spelling it so you'll go to his site, www.bregan.com. Peter, welcome to the show. Uh, John, it's a pleasure to be on for you. I probably, there's hardly anyone else that I would be doing what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm, was going to take a leisurely two hour drive to see a doctor in Syracuse with my wife, and I was thinking we, we're finally going to get to relax together. And then <laughs> you called, and I said, Now nah, I'm going to talk with John. I said, Ginger, how do you feel about having John on the phone? for uh, whatever time while we drive. She said, oh, for John, for sure. So uh, okay. here we are. And we're here we really are, glad. Peter. Th thanks. I appreciate it. I really do. All right. So we know that this guy, Sergeant Robert Bales, according to some reports anyway, had a head injury, sustained a head injury. And we also know that frequently what follows from that in the Army these days is that they start prescribing psychiatric medications often because the patient experiences something that they interpret as, quote, depression. And we know what the effects of these drugs are. So I want you to just tell our audience here, and we're talking, folks, this is an expert expert. What is happening in the military with the proliferation of psychiatric drugs, and what is the effect on the behavior of troops? Well, I'm glad you're putting it in a broad context because there are so many aspects of this case that would be just really important for your audience. First of all, there's no question that anybody who's had four deployments is suffering from what we call uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. It's not really a disorder. He's suffering from the reaction of a normal person with a normal brain to horrific stress. There's just no way that after four deployments, he isn't emotionally uh, compromised because that's the natural response of the human, normal human being with a normal brain to these kinds of experiences. Just one deployment, let alone four. So the whole idea of him having four deployments, I mean, we are, we are abusing our soldiers with these multiple deployments and we're setting them up for violence, for suicide, or for lifelong uh, reliving and re-experiencing of this, these traumas. So that's, that's the first thing. The second thing is, is it does sound like he has traumatic, that he had traumatic brain injury. I do believe that something close to that language is used by the official reports. And when you have a traumatic brain injury, <clears throat> interestingly enough, John, it's almost impossible to distinguish it from what we're calling PTSD. Again, I don't think it's a disorder, PTSD. It's a natural reaction. But the, uh, it's very hard to tell them apart. The person gets uh, irritable and edgy and easily overstimulated. The person reacts with, with judgment, stresses, feels constantly beleaguered, uh, has difficulty thinking in a, in a normal, uh, quick uh, uh, fashion. Judgment gets impaired. And what happens when they jump in with the drugs, Peter? Well, 
that that adds to it, interestingly enough, because the drugs produce exactly the same thing. So if you are taking, and, and the odds are overwhelming, and I want to get into that if we can in some detail what's going on in the service with drugs, but if you're taking an antidepressant, well, what are its common, common adverse effects? Overstimulation, anxiety, jumpiness, hostility, aggressiveness, and a long-term effect of just, you know, you're just not caring about what you do anymore. So we got antidepressants that he's probably been given at some time, almost with certainty at some time. We have the, the head injury. We've got the trauma of these repeated uh, deployments. And, then this and you've documented, thing. Peter, you've documented time and time again that these uh, antidepressants, the SSRI antidepressants like Zoloft and Paxil and Pro Prozac, can and do cause incidents of suicide and homicide. Oh, absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm evaluating a military case right now of a homicide on uh, really? antidepressants. Yeah, right this moment. I can't give you another word about it. But, yeah, I'm evaluating a case right now of that. And, um, and I've seen many in the, in the civilian life as well. There's no doubt about it. And as you know, John, I testified before Congress about a year ago before the uh, House Committee on Veterans Affairs. I, you know, I was the key witness. I, I led off with a half an hour discussion of how these drugs overstimulate people and will uh, drive them in the direction of, of violence suicide. There's another factor I want to add in, because we've got like about five factors beleaguering this individual. Another is that he's working at one of these outposts. And I've talked to people who have worked those outposts. I've talked to therapists who, who, who have been in them. And you've got this horrific problem, which is that your task with relating to the civilian population building schools, helping them out, you know, helping them with their wells or whatever other help we can provide. And, and then you're supposed night, to turn around and kill people, right? Well, well, that, but first, at night, they're turning against you. Because the very wow. people you're working with are going to contain some of the al-Qaeda, some of the, of the enemy. And then, of course, yes, you're supposed to kill them. But under very, very limited rules of engagement that don't really allow for self-defense. So it's a, a, a bizarre situation. This guy, I mean, we're looking at four or five factors that would have been impinging on him. Now, can I talk a little more just about the drugs and what's going on in the military? Yeah, and the way, the way I'd like to have you kind of boil it down here is... The increase, the incredible change that's taken place here with loading up of psychiatric drugs here in the military over the last, whatever, 10 years. Well, it's a very good way to begin, John. It's bizarre. Before the Iraq War, soldiers did not go into combat on psychiatric drugs. They just did. Starting with the Iraq War, Psychiatry and the psychopharmaceutical complex got this top-down power. My wife, my wife is the one that educated me, Ginger, about how psychiatry goes into situations where they can be right at the top and then spread on down. So they go into the military and they spread on down the drugs. So we have gone from a situation in which soldiers didn't go into combat on drugs before Iraq to where estimates of 20% or more of these young, mostly young men and women are carrying drugs into combat. Yeah, and that's the key. That In other words, they can they, just self-dose themselves. They are given up to 180 days to carry with them a mind-bending drug like benzos and stimulants and even the antipsychotic Seroquel for sleep. 180 days. Now you're 19, you're 20 years old, you've been told these things are good for stress. What are you going to do? You're going to pop them. As prescribed. You're going to pop them, exactly. You're going to trade them. You're going to not wow. know even what you're taking some of the time. Trading them. Yeah. Or, this what is... else are you going to do? 
This is complete chaos. I mean, you and I have talked over the years so much about the violent behavior, including, you know, at the time of the Columbine shootings, we were talking about these two young kids who were on Luvox, and, and I questioned you very closely on the potential effects of those drugs in mounting grandiose schemes that involve violence and so forth. And here we're talking about actually putting, you know, untold numbers of soldiers out on the battlefield, under battlefield conditions, under all this stress, with 180 days of these antidepressants and other psychiatric drugs that could cause them to just commit suicide, turn around and kill people, go into all kinds of bizarre behavior. It's nuts, John. It's absolutely nuts. And it's so good that you're, you're giving more, you know, more opportunity for people to learn about this. Um, the, you were referring, I think, to Eric Harris and Columbine, and I know for a fact that Eric Harris, who was perhaps the leader of the two boys, was taking uh, Luvox at the time of the shooting. And here, give you an idea, and we should address this, how the media is covering up all this. About a year ago, USA Today, less than a year ago, I think, did a review of, let's relook at Columbine, and it said, flatly, we now know that Eric Harris was taking blue box at the time of the shooting. So I wrote to them, and I said, look, I have the official FDA documentation that he was had a quote, it's so ironic, on a quote, quote, a therapeutic level of blue box in his blood on autopsy. And wow. furthermore, I have the autopsy coroner's report saying the same <laughs> and, thing. And just so our listeners know, this is another one of these SSRI antidepressants, Luvox, that can indeed, like all of them, stimulate violence, homicide, suicide. Absolutely. And the press, of course, USA Today did not respond to me at all. What uh, a big surprise that is, huh? You know, they didn't want to change the lie. So much is the money and power. And then, John, why isn't anybody asking the question you're asking? You are the first media person to get in touch with me to ask the question about could he have been on psychiatric drugs? The odds are overwhelming that he was. That he was. That, that you he know, was. we've got another story here, Peter, in San Diego, where I'm from, about this guy, Jason Russell who was uh, the director of the Invisible Children video that's gone viral, Coney 2012, and then ended up running around on the street naked and doing all kinds of crazy things and is now in psychiatric lockdown in San Diego. I don't know whether you know about this story, but, you know, yeah. here's... Okay, so there's a lot could be said on all different sides of this issue about the video. That's the point of this, though, is, you know... Where does somebody suddenly do this? You know, people have now been uh, trained, conditioned to accept this kind of thing. Oh, yeah, well, somebody walked into a, a school and shot up the school. Oh, yeah, well, somebody ran out on the street naked, all of a sudden never did anything like that in his life before. And so, again, the question has to be asked. I mean, was he under some kind of psychiatric care? Was he receiving any of these drugs? Did he find somebody who had one of these drugs and he just started taking it? Well, that, that's, that's right. I, I think the odds are when an adult in America today has what looks like a manic episode, has something weird, bizarre, overstimulated, grandiose, like running around naked out of the blue, the odds are in America today it was caused by an antidepressant because they commonly cause that behavior, commonly cause it. Up, up to 20% of people on these drugs develop some kind of overstimulation and you know the data shows maybe five to fifteen percent are going to have something that looks like a manic episode in their lifetime on these drugs very very high numbers and um it, so now yeah. let's just let's just look at this for a second peter we've got these drugs you know all over the place i mean the the numbers of prescriptions and the millions and millions and millions everywhere and then we have these crazy incidents of murder and violent activity and 
bizarre behavior, you know, cropping up all over the country. And yet, and yet, the media becomes less and less able to or willing to even explore the possibility that any of these drugs are involved in any of these incidents. And I've been told that the police don't want to get involved in this, prosecutors don't get in, want to get involved in this, judges even don't want to get involved in this. They don't want to uh, touch this area. They want to stay away from it. Your well, reaction absolutely. to that? Absolutely. Well, you know, when, when, um, when, when I wrote with Ginger, Talking back to Prozac in 1994, I was able to pull out, and she was able to pull out of the media, dozens and dozens of incidents of violence, suicide, mayhem, where the media pinpointed that the person was taking Prozac. And then really? Eli Lilly and the drug companies have just slammed the door, and the media now doesn't even want to ask. Literally, no one's called me to discuss with you. You're the first one. God bless you. Right. You know, to call me and right. say, you know, what could the drugs have been involved? And we don't know for sure, but what would they have done? And, you know, in his case, we almost know for sure. I'm getting calls now, John. This is going to blow you away. I'm getting calls now from soldiers who are being refused deployment because they won't take psychiatric drugs. From the army shrink. Is that and right? That isn't turning the world on its head. That's how. Yeah, because it used it to is. be. I was going to say this to you, Peter. It used to be in the old days that if a kid wanted to go in the army and he said that he'd been on Ritalin, for example, they wouldn't take him. So now what you're saying is, listen, we have this armament of drugs that we're going to pile on top of you, including, as you've documented, the most toxic of all, the antipsychotics. And if you won't take them, we won't let you into the army. But we won't let you go to war. <laughs> we want to go to war. We want you to go to right. active duty deployment in Afghanistan if you won't take the drug. I if you won't take the drug. I'm literally being consulted in cases like that. It's totally bizarre. Unbelievable. This is John Rappaport sitting in for Alex Jones. I'm talking with Dr. Peter Bregan. His website is bregan.com, B R E G G I N dot com. If you want to become educated in a way that will absolutely blow you into smithereens <laughs> go to his website begin to explore his books articles and information on the real Hi, influence this is john rapaport back for alex jones sitting in today for alex on the alex jones show and we're talking with dr peter bragan peter we have only a few minutes uh to go here until we end and off at the top our, of the hour our organizational meeting that's coming we're having a national meeting coming up in a couple of weeks very briefly, yes, please. Yeah, well, it's just April 13th through 15th in Syracuse, New York. Three days of great people talking about all of these issues, including better health service. You can get it on empathictherapy.org, empathictherapy.org, or my website. Empathictherapy.org. Yes, absolutely. Anything that Peter's associated with, folks, I can tell you is not only first class, but mind-blowing. Um, okay. So we now have a situation here in the last couple of minutes as we're talking, Peter, where the Army, the Air, you know, all the services are now, as you said, telling people, hey, if you want to go to war, you've got to take psychiatric drugs. And now the media is not reporting anymore at all on incidents of violence and suicide and so forth that may be or are connected to psychiatric drugs because Eli Lilly and other companies have slammed the door. So the media are now in the pocket completely of the pharmaceutical industry on this, right? Yes, it's much worse than it was five years ago or 10 or 15. Uh, the media is much, much less uh, going to look at psychiatric drugs now. It's really a bad situation, and it's getting worse and worse. You know, we have 20% of women, supposedly, are taking uh, antidepressants now. I mean, we're talking about huge figures. Uh, it's a national tragedy, and long-term, these drugs are very bad for people. I have a blog about this on Huffington Post. If you just go to Bregan on Huffington Post... Go to my blog about long-term effects of antidepressants. It's a national tragedy, John, and you—you you are so to be 
praised for doing this show. Well, we want to cover this for, you know, as many people as we possibly can so they are aware of this. Because the propaganda on this is, of course, pharmaceutical propaganda is always outstanding. I mean, they're going to tell you that this is just the greatest thing in the world and that only rarely do we have problems and so on and so forth. But what you've managed to point out, Peter, that is so important is that this is endemic. I mean, you're talking about long-term effects of these drugs and huge numbers in the population. You're talking about basically lies that have been told to sell these drugs to present studies that appear to make them safe and effective when all of this is just a sham well it's a total sham i mean the drugs are only tested for four or five six weeks by and large so when your doctor wow. says you, you need to take them for the rest of your life he's making it up wow did you hear that folks so the drugs are the study are done for five six weeks the fda approves them then the doctor tells the patient you have to take the drug for the rest of your life and this is science? And the wow. FDA does not require, John, any studying of the adverse effects on the brain. There's no neuropsychological testing or MRIs on animals or on, on people. So they're just ignoring the fact that these psychoactive substances that are alien to the brain are going to have a negative impact on the brain. Unbelievable. This is John Rappaport sitting in for Alex Jones on The Alex Jones Show. We have been privileged to grab a few minutes of valuable time from Dr. Peter Bregan. Again, his website is bregan.com. That's B-R-E-G-G-I-N. Thank you so much, Peter. As always, it's a pleasure to talk to you. John, you are the best. You are the best interviewer on this subject in the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Peter. Say hi to Ginger. Okay, folks. That is... That is not the horse's mouth. That's the mouth of one of the most brilliant medical minds on the planet, Dr. Peter Bregan.